Welcome back to Artists on Artists on Artists on Artists on Zoom. The Last of Us, Mario, Sonic the Hedgehog. These are all characters and video games that people love to play and also to watch. The world of adapting video games into movies is rapidly growing, and these next creators we talk to are changing the landscape for beep boop beep good. This conversation is going to give you a little insight into what it looks like when Hollywood picks up the game controller. So press power, press pause, and listen in. Hi, everybody. Where where are we all coming from? Are you guys in LA? Oh uh, yeah, no, I'm 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 in Arkansas. I'm in Arkansas. I'm 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 in Fayetteville. We're on set, actually. We're shooting the movie. So, hi y'all. Great to see y'all. How's it going, y'all? Hey guys, what's up? I'm so excited to be here. I'm um I'm coming from to you from Seattle. <laughs> yeah, guys. Hey, what's up? I'm so excited to be here. Um, uh, yeah, I'm coming from Los Angeles, Burbank area. And well, which, um, which is it? Hold, sorry to interrupt. Which is it? Which one is it? I'm going from Los Angeles, Burbank area. That's right, two cities, dude. On the dude. border of both of those um, cities. On the border. Mm-hmm. Right near um, Bob Hope Drive. <laughs> okay, I'd say that's Burbank. Yeah, I'd say Burbank. A lot of people if would say it's pick. Burbank, but it's right on the border. Let me tell you. Right next to the, right next to, I have a big house right next to the graveyard. <laughs> Forest Lawn. Forest Lawn. Mm-hmm. There you go. He, okay. Bo- we usually he, call it Forest Lawn instead of the graveyard. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, lo- uh, non-locals call it that. I'm a he, local, so. He's a border man. What's it like being on the border? It's wild. It's wild. Um, it's absolutely insane <laughs> being on the border of such <laughs> giant metropolitan areas. And seeing, seeing cold. <laughs> divide of culture is insane yeah Yeah, what's going on in burbank versus what's going on in los angeles if i told you you wouldn't believe it the difference it just like it's how people say hi it's how people greet you it's the stores that you go to it's the kind of uh restaurants that you would go to it's crazy that's is that, is that enough? They certainly don't have a Milton Edie's in Los Angeles. I'll tell you that. No, they don't. They don't. And is that a Donner? Um, what kind of thing is that? Is that a Donner? I that's incredible. I, I incredible question. It is a popcorn restaurant that also does laundry. So what's a popcorn restaurant? <laughs> so you walk in and there is free popcorn and little Dixie cups of water. And then I have my assistant drop off my laundry. This is what she tells me. And I say, oh, are you going to the popcorn restaurant? And she's like, yeah, I'm, I'm doing your laundry. Um, we have this hilarious back and forth all day long. She That's, loves oh, man. Laundry. That's so That's funny. Awesome. This is a that shout out to Samantha so because she's funny. incredible. She's May we take a rock. second to, to shout out all of our assistants? That would be great. Oh, I'd That's love awesome. to do that. I'd love to do that. Big round of applause for Dylan. Mm-hmm. A huge yeah, for Dylan. Huge Dylan, shout out Samantha. to Dylan. Mm-hmm. Dylan, Samantha, I would love to give a shout out to my son, Gregory. He's a wonderful boy and a great assistant. So awesome. I'm dying to know. Let's let's get into it. I want to know. Am well, I hold si- on a minute. I was interrupted. I interrupted. Uh, I interrupted oh, I'm so our sorry. friend over here talking about the border town of uh, Burbank, Los Angeles, and then uh, we didn't get an introduction from um, from this person right so here. So sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so funny. Locations just make me laugh. Um, <laughs> I am in West Hollywood. Okay. Oh, okay. That's wow. funny. I'm sorry. I giggle every time I hear it. Mm-hmm. What's, what's so, so funny? Because, funny. <laughs> what's funny about that? I mean, it's hysterical because we've got this compass and nobody's really using it because we have ways now, and we're still mm. assigning directions to different towns like we're 18th century soldiers. Like, yeah. what is West Virginia? What are we talking about? Oh God, I can't stop laughing. <laughs> That's right. Why do we still use directions when we have ways? That's a really funny. It's idea. A, honestly that could be a movie, kind of like the chain, like what ways did to the industry of directions of compasses well, that's fantastic. and maps. So you a said ways something. Movie? We should talk about that. Actually. We, we got to talk about. Let's that. all write that down because a ways right movies that. really. That's mine. That's, mine. 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 Uh, uh, okay. Mine. This is yours. I guess it's yours. We don't have to. Worry I would about love to like work on it for you guys, but it's mine. It's mine. 
Well, oh. wait, you did you did say something that um, uh, is is really interesting to me, which is that should be a movie. It's something we probably all say a bunch because we've made movies out of things that aren't frequently or previously movies, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We're the kind of people that look at something and we go, "Oh, that should be a movie," and that's well, all of our movies. Yeah, let's get to it. I mean, I'm so interested to sit with you guys uh, on Zoom and figure out, you know, how your movies came to be and what what importance you saw in your movies. Yeah. Haven't we all go around, we say our names, and then we say uh, what movie we're working on? Love that. That sounds great. Um, I'll go. I'm Lisa Blazer, and I wrote the Claw Machine movie. So it is a full-blown, big-budget, big, flashy, incredible name um, animated adaptation of everyone's favorite video game, The Claw Machine. Uh, um, you put air quotes around wrote? Oh, well, I like to do that for legal pr- I wrote it in that I hired the most amazing writer. And I said, <laughs> I have your next idea. And she says, okay. And I said, are you sitting down? And she said, yes. And I said, claw machine. She asked me many follow-up questions, which I did not answer. And I knew she would pull it off, and she did. Are we? we are we? We're familiar with Rosa, with mm-hmm. Rosa, Rosa, Rosa. I'm familiar. Rosa I'm, Rosa I'm gonna need. A, I'm gonna need a last name. Did- yeah. <laughs> that's- so anyway, that's my deal. Um, I am, and uh, Claw Machine Nation hits theaters in uh, November 2023. And we're very excited to announce, we haven't actually announced this yet, that Jack Black will be playing the Claw and Rebel Wilson will be playing the Machine. Oh! Oh, Different voices. It's not one voice for the Claw Machine. So we dig into this in the story a little bit, but we view the Claw and the Machine as completely different entities. (laughs) And it's a story of two beings sort of working together to solve oh, a problem. Like a Romeo and Juliet. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. And the classic do they story fall of, in love? We're yeah. just going to have to Two beings out. solving a problem. Yeah. Yeah. That's, That's nice. Great. And it's like star-crossed lovers because one of them is literally already inside the other one. It's <laughs> like if I fell in love with my tongue. <laughs> It is. It's exactly like when, you know, those little, um, oh my God, what are they? I'm obsessed with them. It's like the the little cleaner fish that live inside the bigger fish's mouth. Are you talking mm-hmm. about uh, Placostomus is the type of fish that's in a fish tank? And then the remoras you're talking about on the bottom of a shark and stuff? Oh my God, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's and- a movie. That's a movie. It is a movie. Well, it's yeah, actually, I'm doing it after my movie, Aquarium the Movie. I'm working on that. Okay, Aquarium well, the movie. Huge. Movie. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's okay, great. Okay, next? Um, I can go. Uh, yeah, um, my name is uh, Dr. Phyllis Jones. and <laughs> We have a doctor in the house. It is an You're honor a do- to what kind of doctor, doctor are you? I, I'm a doctor of psychology. I'm a, uh, oh. a, a doctor of <laughs> psychology oh. who has switched oh. into oh. producing movies. Um, and I've got a big movie coming out. Uh, it's called Charades. It's about the origin story of how the game that we all know and love that changed parties forever came to forever. Be. Oh, it's, wow. it's a it's a prequel to the game. It's a prequel to the game. It's kind of how the game got developed. <laughs> And I will reveal that you're going to see, uh, you know, it's kind of like the rise and the fall of the creator of the game. You know, what happens when the fame of such a successful party game gets to your head. Um, and who is that creator? Uh, the creator of Charades. He's a guy named Marvin Gick. Marvin Gick? Yeah, he is a, a, a fascinating person. Um, and I got to sit down with him. Does your movie follow him? It follows the life of Marvin Gick kind of right when he starts the game <laughs> to kind of the sad ending of where he is now in his life. And I don't want to reveal too much. And he's I mean, still a lot alive? Of this, he's still alive, barely, um, but he's Got still it. alive. 
<laughs> Got it. <laughs> Still just holding That's on. That's awesome. Thinking yeah. good thoughts for him, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. awesome. Yeah, so me and my son, uh, we were playing charades, and I said, how did this come to be, you know? And my son goes, well, I just look at this Wikipedia article. turns out to be the most fascinating story you would ever read about an individual and what happened to this man named Marvin Gick who invented the game of charades, how it got invented, you know, and the, the life and trials of the man, you know? Mm. Yeah, I'm so fun. glad that Wikipedia is here because there are so what would we many do? movies. Yeah, so what would movies. we do? Sometimes so I'll just click just... and click and click and click until I find a good story. You know? Yeah, yeah. And then, then there I'll you call go. My agent. Yeah, absolutely. I'll buy the IP immediately. Mm-hmm. What about you, sir? My name is Danny Crabtree. I am a director. I live in Arkansas, and I am proud to be the uh, creator and uh, director and writer of the upcoming Big Buck Hunter for Disney+. Plus. Um, it is it's, a really it's on exciting, Disney+. Plus. <laughs> it's on Disney+. Plus. It is a, a limited series, technically a movie. That's why I'm here. You know, uh, it's, we, we were shooting it, and we said, we have a lot more story to tell than just this one and a half hours mm. and so they said okay we'll give you some more money we, we give money out well let's fire about 40 50 more people we'll be able to give you more money so they did that and they i think they got rid of like you know a quarter of their hr in shanghai and then we got to make more of our movie which is really nice um, absolutely incredible <laughs> it's amazing. i love them over there they've been so nice to me um we had a lot of fun adapting big bug country you might know it as that game that you play when you're drinking at a, a dive bar you never want to go back to um uh, the only thing that you can stare at when everything else is covered in swastikas and other disgusting things at a dive bar you know either watch two touties make out or play big buck hunter that's what we do oh so, wow it's really fun. We've been adapting it. We've been having a lot of fun. We kind of took a Mandalorian take on it. So the big buck hunter himself is a mysterious character who uh, goes to different. Oh, he forests. wears. Does he wear a mask? Do you ever get to see his face? Um, he wears a big hat that covers his eyes. Oh, and like a Sia, incredible. sort of. Yeah, Sia. <laughs> if Sia was a trucker, imagine that. And uh, I, mean, she I weirdly could be. can. We I weirdly can. Yeah. So there's a rumor that she is a trucker. Yeah. And we called her to see if she was available, and she said, I can't do the wig and the hat. And we said, well, maybe take the wig off, and she literally hung up. And uh, uh, Literally? Don't, don't ask C to take your wig off. Trust me. We got letters from her. She wrote me 30 letters. She wrote it you letters. It was crazy. She wrote me a lot of letters. How dare you ask me to take my wig off? I'm never going to do that. Anyways. That's incredible. Um, but Can yeah, I, oh so she, we go to different cities, and, 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 he, and he hunts. He hunts bucks. Incredible. And it's really fun. It's so, been hard on Disney Plus because they obviously don't want us killing animals because uh, they did make us make the animals talk. So it's very complicated. Mm-hmm. But That um, was interesting because I read in the deadline they're trying to tie in the Bambi IP into Big Buck Hunter. There's a big crossover, just like in Mandalorian when they when they <laughs> introduce Luke. They're trying to open up the universe. And I don't want to spoil it, but at the end of season one, uh, there is a... Uh, a situation where, yeah, he stumbles into Bambi IP, and uh, let's just say we find out who the faceless killer in uh, wow. uh, the movie is. It's it's Big Buck no Gunner. Way. Wow. So I'm so interested to no see how they way. save his character after that. You it's know, hard. That is a huge. <laughs> It's hard. And it's, yeah, and how you said, did you write that into I was gonna say, you're any saying, way that's redeemable? You're saying, I'm saying, you're saying, I hope they figured it out. They is me, my guy. Like, <laughs> they is me. I've been trying to figure it out. So what I've been doing is I've been just kind of writing that he donates to a lot of charities. <laughs> <laughs> That's always a good way to save. If you want to make a character, it's like screenwriting 101 for anybody listening. If you want to make a character likable and redeemable, mm-hmm. just say that they donate to a lot oh, of charities. Just it's have just them write those you can, checks. You can do whatever you want. Yeah. They can mm-hmm. do anything in the movie. But Absolutely. if they donate to Goodwill, if they drop off a bag of clothes at the end. One bag. Done. <laughs> saved. Well, I Well, that's what's anything. so exciting. The Hunter, as we call him. Um, he, in the back seat, he has a bag, a trash bag full of old flannel shirts. And you see it in the back of his truck, uh, in the back seat of his Silverado, um, just driving around. And you see it every time. And he, and he drives by and he goes, is it time for me to donate? And then, of course, <laughs> wow. he can because he has more hunting to do. But That's you so see inspirational because he isn't wants that, to. Isn't that, the sequel, isn't that the it's sequel to Save the Cat, that screenwriting book? It's screen the, yeah. uh, uh, Save the Cat and then Save the Cat 2 is Bag of Flannels in the Trunk. 
Exactly. Oh, I love that. That needs to be yeah. a movie. Save the cat two bag of flannels in the in the trunk. It's such a good idea. S- I would love to see a movie based on a book about <laughs> screenwriting. Hey guys, so glad to be here. I'm JK. Um, I'm a video game developer turned filmmaker. So this is new for me. Filmmaking's new for me. I grew up making video games. Some of you guys know. Um, my dad um, is Jeremy Pac-Man. He created Pac-Man. Um, the legend the himself. Yeah, so one might say I'm a game nepotism baby, but I didn't grow up in Hollywood. That's so catchy. I'm kind of <laughs> learning Hollywood, um, but I'm really glad to be here. I worked on uh, a movie that's about to come out, my first ever movie, and I'm um, the first ever first time director, first time screenwriter. Um, is We Sports the movie, and I'm really excited about it. What kind of movie is this? Is it like an animated or is it kind of like what 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 is the movie like? Yeah, so it is uh, similar to Space Jam where we are combining live action and animation <laughs> together. Um, we are having a lot of <laughs> starring freaking dare I say, I mean it's already been released, but uh Helen Mirren. Um we Yeah, and just the way like Space that they Jam. Used- <laughs> Like the same sort of de aging technology that's been going crazy. Yeah, you did the same thing to make Helen Mirren's face look like one of those me's. No, we have Helen Mirren playing the me, um, and <laughs> the technology behind this was absolutely incredible. And we have uh, Serena, the the Serena Williams. No. Yeah, yeah, Serena Williams. Um, is the lead of our tennis storyline. We have a couple storylines weaving together, all brought to you together by... Oh my God, like Valentine's Day. So, not really, though. We have three main storylines, bowling, we, uh, tennis, and we walking, which, believe it or not, we made just for the movie. It doesn't exist in the game. I do I, believe you made it just for the movie. That's yeah. Awesome. yeah, that's great. So I just a that. quick question. How is it more like Space Jam and less like Valentine's Day? That's where so I'm a little yes. lost. So um, Helen Mirren is the me, which is a uh, animated character. And we are putting the animated character in a live action like tennis tournament or a bowling mm. alley. We filmed oh, the bowling so he- alley. Helen Mirren, the actress, gets sucked into the world of yes. Wii Sports and now has yes. to compete in all these different sports to survive. But, yeah, I mean, but it sounds like she gets sucked in, but then so she turns into a me and then she goes to a real bowling alley. Yes, and then she's at a bowling alley in Van Nuys. Okay. Um, okay. And that's what's crazy. I mean, guys, I'm sitting at a table and I, I think all of us can agree high concept, high concept, high concept. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Fill it with stuff. Make fill things. It with stuff. <laughs> fill it with stuff. Fill it with stuff. Take stuff, fill it with stuff, make a movie. That was, I was going to take. You know, what are the liberties you guys are taking in the movies? Because there's a, you know, the IP doesn't always give you everything. You've got to take liberties. And Put when that I'm on sitting a t-shirt. At a, literally, the IP I, doesn't give you everything. Yeah. That should be a movie. That should be a movie. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. That should That's be so IP. True. That phrase about IP. <laughs> that should be IP, which in turn should be a movie. Yeah. I'll say we took a lot of liberties with the fact that the claw machine <laughs> in real life does not talk, right? So yeah. we had to come up with I was going to ask you that. Like, how did you guys get around that? Because that it, seems it like a really huge. It was really tough. And this was something I debated with, with Rosa for like a long <laughs> time. Because she brought me in this first draft where, you know, the claw machine. And at this point, it was all one thing, which I'm so glad we killed. Because we found this wonderful thing where it's uh, two different actors. Um, but she would come in with this draft where the claw machine... Um, was talking and it was a story about being yourself uh, like that didn't fit in with the other video games and I said Rosa I have a problem claw machines don't talk I need a rewrite and so she came back in and she was hesitant she thought that the movie would be a little static Mm. Um, and then I read the rewrite there was no dialogue in it and I said Rosa this is not a silent film Mm -hmm. and then she came back and she added more dialogue and it was upsetting to me and so we kind of went back and forth and back and forth between talking and no talking and talking and no talking and we Mm. gradually landed on this fantastic final product where (laughs) half the time the claw machine is talking, and then half the time, its voice is stolen by Ursula, who's a different character in um in in the, the Little Mermaid. In, is she well, one of the not in our toys? version? No. Oh. <laughs> so Ursula plays an Ursula is an octopus 
in the Dave and Buster's game where you reel in fish. Uh -oh. Okay, so um, that hey. sounds very similar to, and <laughs> Ursula steals the claw machine's voice. Because that, so that's yeah. exactly, so So Ursula yeah. in The Little Mermaid, have you seen Little Mermaid? It's by Disney. So this is what Rosa said, and it really confused me. Yeah. Um, okay, so this was your pitch. This I was disagree. your pitch. <laughs> yeah, this was based on a dream I had, so I don't think it was. <laughs> it wasn't a dream. Can I ask I you something? Does, does the claw machine make maybe a deal with the octopus to like win something or, or maybe be a video game or something? Yeah, now you're thinking like a screenwriter. So yes, she <laughs> gives her voice away in exchange for being a popular game for getting a slot in the new arcade built down the street called uh, Donnie and Bingo's. And so this uh -huh. sort of awesome, this octopus character escapes from her video game to make this deal. And you'll have to see what happens in the end. But it w it followed my dream very closely. Mm. Wow. When did you have this dream? <laughs> you have a date? When you, you have a specific date for the dream. <laughs> so it was so funny. I had this dream right after. So... Um, uh, uh, I, I had this dream right after Disney put out this trailer starring, do you know, um, Chloe and Hal? These uh, two Chloe girls. And Chloe and Hallie. Chloe and Hallie. Chloe and Hallie, yeah. yes, they're fantastic. Hal. They're two artists and one of them. <laughs> their sister. Um, is in some sort of movie. I never saw oh the trailer, <laughs> but I did have a dream, um, about this sort of octopus character named Ursula. And I woke up and I said, oh, my God, I'm a genius. And who's, and playing, who's playing her in, in the movie? Well, in the movie, it's Melissa McCarthy. Okay. In your um, movie. In your movie oh, or your dream? Oh, in my movie, yeah. Okay. Well, I dreamed it up that way. And so I, I knew we had to get Melissa for this. Uh-huh. Do you find that you pull from your dreams a lot? <laughs> I would say, yeah. I mean, I... You know, I I am a writer in that I dream about things and then I communicate them to screenwriters. Um, I had this other wonderful dream recently that I'm currently adapting. It's about this lion um, that really deeply wants to be a monarch. And he is on this rock wants with all these other lions. Okay. Deeply yeah. wants to be a monarch. I, th I think that might uncle. be Lion King, but I don't remember him really wanting to be a monarch in that movie. Yeah, so. this makes me feel like better that you don't actually have dreams that are straight up Disney IP. It feels like this one's different. It this feels lightly yeah, different. Yeah, I'm confused why Disney is entering the conversation because this is a dream I had. <laughs> and this lion had this uncle who was... Uh, you know, had this uh, slash across his face, and that's why his name was Slash. And he really <laughs> wanted to be the monarch. He wanted to be the Lion Monarch. And so, was your we're dream really called excited. Lion Monarch? Do you do you name it your? It was dream? called the Lion Monarch. Oh wow! Yeah, uh, um, Miss Blazer, I would I would recommend because I am working for Disney. Um, I would be careful with that kind yeah. of. I know you're not stealing from them on purpose, and oh, it, no. it sounds like lateral thinking. Sounds, sounds like a lot like of it's stuff. It's all dream play. Yeah, sounds like it's all dream play, and it's just happening. And then you're. But now I would maybe take a look through their catalog. I know it's a lot, but if you, it might be helpful for you to make sure that you don't have anything that overlaps with them. Because yeah. a couple of these ideas, we're really they're really serious really about close, their stuff. really close. <laughs> I mean, yeah. this is the first I'm hearing of this. No one in my circle has brought this up. So How big is your it circle? It sounds like Rosa brought it up. Um. I think my circle is Rosa and my assistant, who, <laughs> I'll be honest, I can't hear her most of the time. Because <laughs> I, a problem with assistants just in the way these that days, she sounds such a small kind of voice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do. I feel like they're making assistants smaller and smaller nowadays. <laughs> or or they're being told specifically. to be smaller. Yeah. I can't tell oh, what yeah. what it is mm -hmm. because sometimes it's like, do you do you want to sound like that? Was did someone tell you to sound like that? Absolutely, I don't. Because to have me, an Catherine sounds like an itty bitty little ant. Yeah, yeah. That's like my well, son. I can barely hear him. I can barely hear him. He mumbles all the time. Just mumble, oh, <laughs> blah, 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 you know. Is All your right. son um, heavily involved in the movie as yeah. an assistant? Has he? So my son has helped me. He wrote it. He helped me write it. We've kind of been from the ground up uh, pitching to studios. He's been in there the whole time. He's been great helping me out with this. Um, 
<laughs> so that is great news. Um, and I love my son, but boy, does he mumble. He mumbles mm. so much. Um, mm. I mean, talking about liberties for, for charades, um, the original story, Marvin Gick was sitting at a party and came up with it. Um, he, he saw somebody trying to explain somebody to somebody else, and he said, it would be hilarious if uh, they were they couldn't talk. And God, what a moment in actual history mm-hmm. that must well, have been. Well, he used, yeah, he used other and words. And what year was that? That was when that ni- happened? That was 1961 when he did that. Wow. 1961. And he was using wow. other words. He's a very racist bad man. So we <laughs> had to take liberties to change that. He was going, you know, saying much worse things about, you know. Right. So and, and we. Doc, doctor, do I call you Dr. Jones, Dr. Phyllis? Like, what you do you can, want me to call you? You can call me Phyllis. You can call me Dr. Phyllis. You can call me Dr. Jones. Whatever you want. Dr. Phyllis. Dr. Phyllis. <laughs> oh, like Dr. Phil. He kind of. So I'm. <laughs> what? Any relation? <laughs> No, that's a first name. That's not how that works. Uh, okay. <laughs> Got it. Okay, All because right. the two words sound so similar to me. I was just like, you guys have to be. Are you sure? Yeah, um, that's it, not how first names work. If your so, name is Tom and the other person's name is Tommy, no relation. That's that's it's usually the last name would be. Um, interesting. That's so interesting. Mm-hmm. So, okay, so Dr. Phyllis, um you uh you you created this uh, this whole story, so you, you took a lot of liberties, you said. Mm, just a bit. You know, the original story is yeah. so raw and so dangerous. You know, sometimes you have to add a little heat and a little love and a little sure. bit of spice to a What story. was your research experience like? Did you, did you dive into the research? Did you yeah. have someone else do the research? I mean, I certainly didn't have to do a lot of researching. I've been growing up, I grew up around hunters my whole life, so I didn't, I didn't need to mm-hmm. um, look what it was like to be a hunter. You know, mm-hmm. Buck, the character, you know, but you were going off a real person. Yeah, so our research, we had a meeting with uh, Marvin Gick, and he is – so close to death that, um, mm. you know, he tells us this story takes about five minutes and we go, okay, the rest is what we're going to make up. So we added a lot, a lot, a lot to this. <laughs> you spoke to him for five minutes? Five <laughs> minutes. The nurse else. said he has to go to bed. Oh. And, and, you know, we asked him, he said, I said, how did this come? He said, well, I was, I'm sitting at a party, you know, and he used some bad words, bad words. Um, and he said, this, the, you know, this is a specific type of party and, and somebody's talking like a dummy. And I don't and I don't want to say what he called that dumb person. Um, and then he said, so I said, shut your mouth and try to explain it to him. Now we're playing a game. Drink. Um, and that was it. And I said, what happened after that? He said, I don't know. Went to sleep immediately. So the rest of our what story. What a captivating story. It's so captivating. And this guy, you guys have to meet him. He's absolutely captivating. He's When you talk about him, it sounds just like that Lin-Manuel Miranda when he talks about Alexander Hamilton. Yes. When you talk yes. about Marvin Gick. Yes. Absolutely. I, I, f- I feel like that's a lot of my inspiration. I saw that Lin-Manuel was doing Hamilton and I said, now wait just a second. <laughs> you can do that. <laughs> and and that's um isn't that what movie making is yeah it's exactly. you can do that it's you it's, can do absolutely wait a second just a you, second you can do that oh yeah absolutely. i watched my dad make a fortune off of getting high as fuck and making a little drawing and animating that drawing to eat things and suddenly i was living in bel-air growing up having going from home to home just like rich off my ass and i went you can do that Mm, mm. and that's why i was said i want to be in the film industry i want to be in the media what was the inspiration if i've always been wondering i know your dad was uh famously uh secretive about where the inspiration for pac-man came from what that shape was taken from can you could you tell us right now I don't like to talk much about my dad. I like to separate it from because my dad's a different guy. He's a media mongol. You know what I mean? He's very <laughs> a mongol, a mongrel, <laughs> not, not a mongol, not a He's mongol. He's like a Mongolian. Oh, so he... <laughs> he's a media mongol. You so is he I... like is he like a Mongolian where like uh, like Genghis Khan where he 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 takes over places and he he just like mm-hmm. does raids exactly and pillages? Exactly who my dad is. He's a Mongol. He is media Mongol and he'll take over. And that's why I like to just. I, I mean, I am I thankful for him. I grew up in immense wealth, um, and so I'm really lucky. And I got to meet a lot of people because of my dad being a media Mongol. But 
I will say I I don't like to associate myself with him um, in terms of just like I I like to make press about the Wii movie. But I will say my dad's mouth is shaped like that. That's what I'll say. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Is his head shaped <laughs> like that, or is it no? Like but just that's his how mouth? he eats. And well, I'll just leave so it at that. He, yeah. Nah, 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 yeah. Nah, nah, and that's nah. kind of where the inspiration came from. But that's not my that's not my story to tell. And I like to separate it and talk more about Wii Sports, the movie. Well, that's great. Yeah. Did you guys pick your video games or did your video games pick you? Oh, my video game picked me. I mean, I was the the top score um, at a uh, big big buck hunter uh, at the at the stink pit uh, in uh, <laughs> Ar- Arkadelphia, One of my favorite um, favorite the dive bars. Wow! I used to go to stink the stink pit all the time, and I I won that game frequently. People used to stand around and watch me play, and it was really really fun. And what's crazy about it is I played so much that I got the top score again. I always put ass, A-S-S, even though that's not my name because that was what I would say my name was just for fun to be laughed at. But all my Wait, scores. no way. The, so the top 10 that's scores. So funny. Isn't, do, do that's got to be a movie. That's got to be a movie. That's got to be a movie. Ass, well, really the creative. top score, and everybody's trying to figure it out like a murder mystery. That yeah. reminds me of Hamilton a little bit. Well, so that is my work. So I, I will say that I'm going to claim that. So Great. don't I, I don't want you guys getting any ideas. I think ask the movie. <laughs> well, it's been done a okay, few times Okay, we had before. the idea, though, to think that is a good idea. I know, so no, no. We're no, going to have to talk about this later. I did the so work. Because we technically could own the idea of people owning the idea, right? Because there's all sure. these stories, right? Right. Of not the film itself or not the game itself, but the making up. Oh, so right? you guys are going to get You're going to make a movie about how I came up with writing ads ass on big bug hunter yes it's a beautiful a great, story it's just like lin-manuel miranda with alexander hamilton <laughs> you know it's not this because i this is exactly my wheelhouse <laughs> i own the ip for the idea of making a movie about yeah. the of leonardo da vinci and i know i own the ip of the idea of johnny appleseed movie so it's great well, well what i wanted to say was when i got all those 10 asses on the screen and i wrote ass 10 times uh, as soon as I did that, the, uh, the the machine of the game itself unlocked, and I got to go. Uh, there was a little thing inside, and there was an envelope, and it said to the person who gets all wrote ten asked. scores. No, it didn't say wrote ass. That would freak me out. It would be to the same for the person who got all ten top scores, and it was the movie rights to <laughs> Big Buck Hunter. So I guess it, I guess the guy no who created way. it. Put so that I guess in I'd, the stink pit. So I'd been playing the original Big Buck Hunter. I didn't know that. I, I was playing the first one. And, and uh, I guess the guy that made it, his name was uh, Don Daltrey. He lived in uh, Arkadelphia. And he lived in Arkadelphia. And he, he put that in there. And it was kind of a Willy Wonka situation. Um, I did look up that man. And he he's actually pretty young. He's in his mid-40s right now. But he just <laughs> kind of isn't interested. Um, Can I ask just, you something? Yeah. That... Sounds like a fantastic movie, start to finish. No, 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 I was just no, gonna no. say, and no. you chose to go like Mandalorian style. <laughs> no, yeah. no, that's not. That's just how it happened. But then I thought, who is this hunter? What if he's played by John Hamm? And what if he's Incredible. mysterious and he's and he's he's a grump and he's frustrated, but he's on a journey to kill every animal in the forest, right? <laughs> but he's likable because he's getting rid of some of his clothes and giving them to a for-profit business that sells back um, thrift store clothes at a higher value. So it, it I, you know, I, it, it's it's different, right? But but that that's just my life. I don't yeah. really like making movies out of my life because that's my I live my life and I make movies. Y'all know what yeah. I mean. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Live your life. Make movies. Yeah. I, and that's not for sale. <laughs> Please don't take that. That's not. Well, a, that's, well we're going to have to talk about it after this. Yeah. God. Um, I would love to know what you guys like. Like, did you did you guys have a passion for making movies before finding a video game and taking it and sort of making it a movie did you make other things like is this like for me I'd say I was always kind of on the lookout for just like objects and concepts that can be made into movies Mm -hmm. yeah love Mm -hmm. that I saw the most fantastic mailbox outside my house and oh did you yeah, I've been pitching that around town because I think that's What's the just story? Like such a fascinating story. Well, it's red, 
and it's sort of <laughs> angular and it does the most unbelievable thing when you pull up the mail slot there's uh-huh. a little uh sort of um uh gnome affixed to the back and you get to see the gnome every time you open the mail slot um is this your so, mailbox yeah <laughs> You sounded okay. like you were accusing me of something. No, no, no. I'm not no. just I was going just into random people's mailboxes. <laughs> I was just okay, wondering. I'm sorry. We no, I, we got a no, little. No, no, that was. No, weird. I love that. Some it's wires a, are crossed here. Yeah, yeah that so, that moment right there should not be a movie. That was I don't a like glitch. Tension in my movie. That was a little yeah. bit no. of a glitch. No, I, no, that was a glitch. No, I. So you pitch. You've been making movies a, a lot, Lisa. Yeah, we or so pitching before, them at least. I've been pitching them, um, but I have, you know, I was the, I was a, a, a producer on um, the Windex movie. Uh, we had the Doodle Jump movie as well. Um, that went straight then, to straight to DVD. Doodle Jump. Straight to DVD. Ju- DVD, Doodle Jump. which is now, I love how DVDs have come back. <laughs> no, I think it's so vintage. It is vintage, and people want like a physical copy of something that they can hold in their hands and that they can mount on their wall before they go and watch it on Netflix. So, Lisa, I, think- I had a question. Did you did you yeah. make um did you make the movie? I think I saw this. It was um uh, three car pileup. Was that a movie you made? <clears throat> Yeah, three car pileup. It this was is, and it said based on, on a true story. Yeah, yeah, on a true mm. story. So half my movies are based on dreams, and half of my movies are based <laughs> on true stories. And I would say that the true story, like the, sometimes the most interesting thing to write about, is something real that's happened to you. And I was on the four hundred five, and I watched this car stop in its tracks, and you won't believe what happened next. Two other cars crashed into them everyone was fine and i pulled over and i um like a lot of people were stopping to offer help to see what was going on and they couldn't open the doors like some people were trapped in the cars but i knew what needed to be done and so i used all my might to pry open that car door and i asked them right then and there for the rights and (laughs) you know what they Holy yes. shit. <laughs> what rights were you actually getting? The concept of three cars crashing? No, the story of what just happened. The tragedy. <laughs> yeah, the story of what just happened. And thank goodness they're all okay, I think. Because someone else um, was nearby and called this number 911, which we're also working on making a movie. And it just changed the way I do filmmaking. Incredible. Yeah, I saw that Vulture article about you. How lately you've been um, you've been hanging out in hospitals? I have. That was such an interesting vulture article. And just wait it, and you go in and you ask for rights for each story. Like you, go I in go there. in and I wait. They wrote I it in such a snarky way, by the way. Time. Yeah, they wrote it like you were the villain almost. Vultures a bunch of like vultures, you were prying on people that were close to death. Yeah. That's such an interesting interpretation of events, but that would be a movie. Yeah, mm. I mean, if that were I, true. I am so, I love listening to these stories because I know nothing about the movie industry. Absolutely nothing. To the point where I'm such a gamer and game developer that when we were shooting We the Movie, instead of saying cut, I, I kept being like, your turn's over. Your turn's over. And they go, no, in that's this like industry. That's such a long sentence to that's say. Such a, and, and such said, a gamer in, thing for you to say. Yeah, what, and this what a industry, gamer thing when things are say. over, we say cut. We don't say your turn's over. Yeah. yeah, but in the gaming uh, industry, y'all scream your turns, your turns over, over all oh, yes. the time. Your turns over, your turns over. Turns what other over. things would you say? In the gaming industry, uh, instead of um, quiet on set, we usually say, "Shut up, it's my turn." <laughs> so we said, <laughs> would, was action the same? Was action the same? Um, no, we have go. Oh, <laughs> oh okay. that's pretty similar. Yeah, three, Can two, ask- one, go. Can I ask y'all a question, uh, you know, from one game adapter to another? Uh, a big part of creating ad- adaptations from games is uh, satisfying a rabid fan base, right? Oh, like, oh, people so that true. care so much about the subject and the source material. How are y'all um, servicing that fan base in your uh, new project? 
It's been tough. Let me tell you that. It's I mean, the really charades tough. fan base. <laughs> the rabid they, charade fan they base. They are rabid. You have and all generations. They're out for blood, you know. And mm-hmm. so when the deadline article got released, the fans came for me and my son's throat. Um. I, saw, I actually saw I am part of the charade Reddit, and mm-hmm. it is so nasty over there. R I'm so sorry silent for game. the way the silent generation treated you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They yeah. really banded together. They left the nursing home, and mm-hmm. I, it's so terrible what they did to your car. Mm-hmm. Didn't you get hunted after uh, by Ellen's people too? Because of I got her, I got hunted after by game. Ellen's people. Yeah, because of but her that's game. not right because because that game is only verbal. Heads up is verbal, so Ellen mm-hmm. needs to chill it's, out. She needs to calm down, and, and that's what we're trying to do. It's it's a movement hashtag Ellen calm down. <laughs> I'm well, I believe there's a level there's a level in in what's up or heads up that is no words. Mm, mm, um, mm. Yeah, I'm she sorry. tries. She's trying to claim that IP, but yeah, it was really tough. And I'm trying to constantly tell them, guys, see the movie. You'll see how accurate we we keep to the story of charades. How accurate we play the game of charades. But you know, people have created their own house rules, and they want to <laughs> see their own house rules. They don't want to just see a person desperately trying to explain something in silent going to movies close to sounds like they they don't want that anymore they want you know they want some real good charade so and and i I would i would imagine too something that's a little difficult for your movie you know in in satisfying the fan base they want to see people act out you know a star wars they want to see people act out indiana jones are you able to mention real ip no we're not we're Uh, not allowed to any mention any real ip or any product so a lot of the movies that people are trying to get in the movie we've created basically a fake universe of movies for the movie charades and a fake universe of books and a fake universe of well that's a multiverse and you and i mean multiverse is money in the bank Mm -hmm. so so you know, it's oh my like God. Has, have all of your studios been trying to get you guys to turn your movie into multiverse? Oh, yes. you're looking at oh Wii Sports. God. They yeah. wanted me to have a, a Super Bowl in five different universes, all on a me. Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. is actually, I think, a platform that would lend itself to multiverses quite well. Of all the ones, yours feels like the most multiverse. No, no, <laughs> you, you, you would think so, but then you put pen to paper. Absolutely not. It's tough. No, it's God, tough. I so hate you're trying to write to the multiverse. <laughs> I tried it, and I said, guys, this story doesn't lend itself to that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think that's something that writers say when they don't want to write. The story Absolutely. doesn't lend itself to that. No. Yeah. I'm like, are you okay. guys just yeah. playing yeah. ping pong in your rooms, texting you know on yeah. your phone? I think you bring up a good point. Maybe I am. Maybe I was lazy, and I didn't want to say that, so <laughs> I said this story doesn't lend itself to that. <laughs> but the studios bought it, mm. and know. that's all that matters. Do you guys um, have any rabid fan bases? Yeah, uh, the claw fan base. I mean, come on. Yeah, the claw heads are so intense, mm-hmm. and. The interesting thing about the claw heads is that I would say that claw machines are not like a, a a brand that is repeatable. Like many companies own their own types of claw machines with their own types of prizes. And so where a lot of the conflict comes from between the fan bases, and it's interesting because the fan bases are sort of eating at each other and they're mm. not coming for me because a lot of people are saying, you know, I'm from Coney Island. My fa- my claw machine doesn't look like that. In my claw <laughs> machine, um, it's all minions in the in the mm. that are prizes. Oh well, my claw machine has Shamus. Those are the Sea World people, and so it's like how big is the Sea World people fandom? <laughs> oh, huge! I mean, Blackfish oh. has been gone for a while so the sea world <laughs> people are back in a new and big way actually that should be a movie and we should talk about this after but the rise of it, the sea worlders mm-hmm. the oh fandom blackfish really too blackfish too with people Black this time fish too. <laughs> That's good. except this time it's a different thing it's with people <laughs> except okay t- and blackfish too except this time it's a different thing bit i love punch, that log a bit of a punch down on mine lisa but that's all right <laughs> You're the you're the exact you're the big wig. 
I don't think I'm punching down. I think I'm punching genius. And okay. that's something okay. we do when we put pen to paper. But mm, did okay. your fans, did the Buck Hunter fans have anything to say? Or yeah, they like, Disney them. could yes. be fraught territory. We call them the Buck Fuckers. And the Buck Fuckers are obsessed. <laughs> did they choose that name? Speaking or of punching down. <laughs> they chose it. They chose Buck Fuckers. Oh, wow. Yeah. wow. Which is crazy. I mean, it's really weird. You know, I, I, I you know, it's, it's a strange, it's a strange thing. I told my Were boyfriend. Were they picky? Were they I told my boyfriend, they go by Buckfuckers, and he said, okay, whatever. <laughs> you know, we, we don't, we don't, I guess we're not offended. You know, it's okay. It's close. There's a CK in there, you know. Were they, uh, were the Buckfuckers picky about your cast? Buckfuckers <laughs> with a CK. <laughs> oh, sorry. The That's the fine line we're, we're driving, okay? And I just fell right on the line. Um, <laughs> Were the buck fuckers upset about your casting? Because I know they were so serious about the buck hunter. Um, yeah, so they wanted me to cast uh, uh, from... Swedish. Uh, what'd you say? Did, weren't they so... You, you, you go. Yeah, so they wanted me to cast uh, Ron White from the Blue Collar Comedy Tour. <laughs> Tater Salad. They wanted Tater Salad to do it, but but that man uh, is just not in fighting shape to run a series like this. Yeah, um, he has some problems. He's a little older, and he was a lot of action in it. You know, a lot of tough. action in it. A lot of backflips over the guns and stuff like that. You and, can't get um, him to do that. We couldn't get him to do it. And it just wasn't right for the project. We wanted to be young and sexy and interesting, you know. So we went with John Hamm. Who how did they, how'd they end up with Ron White? You know, how did that kind of come become the consensus in the group? Well, because yeah, everybody sort of talked. Yeah, everyone loves. You know, they're they are not on Reddit. They actually all meet up. They they are a physical. Uh, they kind of do these rallies where you you go to the the Buckfucker rallies and you go see them all. You they go out to the woods and they all hang out together. And then one of them brings and they a big all generator. Decided. They Rock. all decided they, they they bring a big generator and they hook up a big Buck Hunter game. Uh, out in the woods and they play it in the woods like they're actually shooting and so it actually it's almost like a uh, nicotine patch for hunters right like it it, wow. it it you know it's it's helpful big buck hunter is helping people not hunt you know it's instead of doing the real thing i'm gonna go use this this uh this little machine but uh they yeah, just love ron I was white in, I've, i w- i was trying to go to disneyland the other day and i got caught behind the biggest buck hunter rally and we <laughs> could not move traffic was stopped for it's hours crazy. Mm-hmm. well because they got their own generators because they're all doing they prefer so they can set up anywhere <laughs> anywhere they the want highway. they'll do whatever they want man they and, were set uh, up on the highway they were set up on the highway they were set up in a toll booth i heard and there they have their own area. police because they're all they they've you know they've developed a society so yeah, it, it is really scary. is tough the it buck is hunter community police wow. are strict to the police. yeah 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 they're really, wow. really scary. But but so they all they want is they want to see things get shot. They said, Oh, yeah. we better be seeing yeah. things get shot. And I said, Don't worry, y'all. You're absolutely that's the whole thing. And the big thing, the huge thing that they 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 don't want to miss is uh, the turkey bonus round, which is where all the turkeys come out of nowhere and you shoot as many turkeys as you can. It's a bonus round, it's is really Is that fun. end of act two for you? Where is that No, in your- it's every fifteen minutes we do a turkey bonus round. So <laughs> So, um, so how they're long just are the kinda, episodes? Each episode is forty-five minutes. So we do three turkey bonus rounds per episode, <laughs> and we have them come on out, and and just he just kind of stumbles into the hunter stumbles into uh, a bunch of turkeys every fifteen minutes, wow. uh, and sometimes they come pouring through the door, sometimes whatever. But it's just fun, and there's no consequences, and it doesn't mean anything, you know, because yeah. if you don't hit a buck in the game, it, it means a lot. But if you don't shoot a turkey, it's okay. It's just fun, and the wow. turkey is it's really fun. We uh we have the turkey voice by Sean Mendez. He does all the voices, and when I tell you this man has a lot of accents he is trying some stuff that we can't air unfortunately he's trying some accents that aren't okay god he's but hilarious he's really funny such a and funny this, guy some of the I think accents, he's funnier than ron white he's so funny i that's what i've been trying to tell the buck fuckers because we really want them to embrace sean mendez and they are having a hard time. That sounds and like a tough community to convince to embrace Sean Mendez. Yeah, somebody, somebody made a mod where they did the turkey round and they replaced all the turkeys with Sean Mendez. And now, now we've got all these buck fuckers shooting Sean Mendez. And oh, it's, it shoot. doesn't look good. Oh, God, I am so God. thankful. I have no we sports fans. <laughs> There's none. <laughs> There's none. We picked a game that has a zero fan base, um, which is actually more relaxing. 
and makes me need to earn it more. Um, well, yeah, you pick the game that comes free when you buy a Wii in 2009. <laughs> <laughs> we picked a free game. Um, and we picked a game that's basically just sports. So we're, we're going against every sport movie trope. But I have no fans to try to please. So I Do feel you have blessed. sports fans upset at all? Or no, is it sport- just... There's actually, I've had a lot of my researchers, a lot of my guys do some research, and the sports fans to Wii Sports fans, there is no crossover. Mm. Um, The people who actually (laughs) like Wii Sports, the people who actually like Wii Sports are um, uh, uh, women from 37 to 41. Um, That's a great demo. Yeah, Yeah. it's a good demo. What a a wonderful five-year demo. demo. Four-year demo. It's a a good demo for um, There's so many women that are from 37 to 41. That's a great place to be. And it's a golden age for spending because it's the time that they all wake up one day and they want to buy candles. And so (laughs) you got to get them while they're spending and while they're used to it. Yeah, but it's that's why I think we went with Helen Mirren. We went, who are we making this movie for, right? Um, originally, we had talks with LeBron. We had talks with so many, uh, Dan Marino from the Dolphins. We got everybody. And suddenly we went, wait, this is, we can't really make this a sports movie. We kind of got to go a little women route and make this an afternoon snoozer, but also make it <laughs> full of, full of fun sports stuff. So that's where Space Jam comes in a little bit as one of our comps. So Yeah, yeah. I feel like we must have had the same teacher as someone. I know you know did never did movies, but um uh when I went to film school, uh they uh they used to say I went to film school in in, in Arkansas, they said uh, women for m- women only like movies that are snoozers. When you make a movie for a woman, it's got to be a snoozer. <laughs> There's just got to be an option snoozer. to and, take a and nap. Here's the There's thing. just got to be an thing option. They teach you. And that's what they teach you, and you learn. I remember I learned this at the end of my film school. I, I went to NYU. Did, did you go to NYU? or went No, somewhere? I went to University of Arkansas. Because NYU, they taught us that uh, movies for women need to be snoozers because, ergo, women are tired. Wow. Right. From all the and when I learned so that, true. when I learned that, suddenly I was like, I think I could write a movie. Um, I, man, I, you know, I, I, I'm sitting in a panel of, of incredible women. When I when I was a kid, and I realized that y'all are tired, that was so crazy <laughs> to me. I, women being I tired be... changed cinema. I would mm-hmm. say, yeah, that's a movie. Say. That's or a movie. The, yeah, a I would movie. love to make a movie about the the day that my film producer, my film professor. Um, decided to teach us that women are tired because mm, that what amazing. a brave act, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, men are so, bored and women are tired. God, and that's why I think movies for men you got to make them loud and you got to mm-hmm. make them messy. Mm. That's so true. That's what I learned. Maybe this is so inappropriate. <laughs> no, I think it's fine. I think it's similar to everything we do. Y'all, um, um, it's been it's been delightful talking to y'all. I want to go over, you know, anything that people need to know, and I'd love to know, um, you know, the last thing you want to tell your fans before your movie comes out, and what you're up to next. How we can oh, catch uh, you? Two great questions. Love that. Well, that's great. Um, I would love to do something in charades, but since this is a podcast, I just don't think it's going to translate. So I'm just going to say, well, it. give it a shot. Tell, uh, let's see if we can guess it. Okay. Uh, um, two, two words. words. Movie. 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 <laughs> so you're making a movie next. First you're making a movie. Oh, but you don't have the rights to use real movie titles. So this is just not going to be. We're <laughs> not going to know. We're going to be guessing word salad here. Okay. <laughs> okay. First word. Okay. Num- first, word. first word. Eating. 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 Soup. Ch- soup. Salad. Uh-huh. Pasta. Uh-huh. Chewing. Hungry. Chewing. Chewing. Pasta. Hungry. Oh, we'll be here forever. Oh, hungry. <laughs> hungry hippos. That's IP. Okay. Okay. Close? He says we're it's close. close. To it. Okay. Second, second word. word. Eating uh, pussy. Fish? Hungry. <laughs> hungry dogs. Dogs. Hungry. You guys are never gonna get. It. T- it's hungry hoopas. In our reality, hippos are called hoopas. <laughs> oh. 
Oh so my close God. to hungry so, pussy. I don't know why I chose that. For, <laughs> That's so deep. For the charades. looked like you were eating out a, a, a pussy, for lack of a better word. I've never seen oh. anyone move their well, hands Well, you like guys that. have never drawn what a hoopa looks like specifically <laughs> That is not, eating. our audio listeners will not believe me. They'll think we were making That's vulgar true. guesses. And the Zoom listeners won't believe you either because this uh, jumps to whoever's speaking. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we won't even grab that. <laughs> so so you guys will know. never see what I was doing. But it looked like a hoopa <laughs> opening his mouth. My advice for you guys, two words. So untrue. <laughs> It, my movie sounds like a good movie. Come see it. Fall 2024. It'll be out. Incredible. Okay, hoopas. I can't wait. So that's in the charades verse. So you're going to start making movies out of the, mo- the titles mm-hmm. that were in the original. Okay. Mm-hmm. So basically we're opening up to be this is the first movie and all the made up. I've already bought all the IP to the made up movies that we've made. Hungry Hoopas is a, is a movie we're working on in the future. And to the fans, give it a chance. I'm telling you, <laughs> give this movie a chance. It's going to be much better than you think. I promise you're not going to be let down. <laughs> Incredible. Well, I would say everybody please go out and see Claw Machine Nation. Um, Rebel Wilson and Jack Black are phenomenal. And um, <laughs> they do have some really tear-jerking monologues. We are going for best actor and best actress. Um, <laughs> Can I ask just one final question? Good for Why y'all. is it called Claw Machine Nation? <laughs> Well, because um, I heard a girl in my dream say something like White Claw Nation. She was like this beautiful drunk woman. (laughs) Gosh. You just said that? (laughs) And she just said that. It was way different than most of my other dreams. Um, I had like an edible right before this. And so she was just saying some crazy things. But I loved the word nation. And that was really buzzing in my mind. And the word claw really buzzing in my mind. So this is how these things happen. But uh, see that. And then I'm very excited um, because we already got a sequel order. Um, So this will be Q4 2024. We are going to be releasing Vending Machine Nation. And the exciting thing about this is that we are getting, we are releasing this movie in 5D exclusively. So um, when audiences see characters input things into the vending machine, a uh, granola bar will shoot at them in the face. I mean, and what's the fourth? What's the fifth? A granola bar. <laughs> what are the dimensions You would there? think maybe popcorn or candy. <laughs> so can you go through the dimensions of that? Right. So um, the first dimension is one atom. The second dimension is a line between two points, right? So that's I got anything that. you yeah, see yeah, on yeah. paper. The third dimension is where we're all at right now. So this is 3D objects, 3D space. The fourth wow. dimension is water. Uh, like when you see Shrek 4D and water shoots out. And the fifth dimension is a granola bar. <laughs> one. It's one. Do you have to load wow. it back in and then it'll shoot back out? So the granola bar, it it's just a granola bar. <laughs> Okay. We are creating 75,000 new jobs um, for people to get the granola bars, put them back in the movie screen, and then shoot them back out again. People oh, there's a slot in the movie, in the movie screen. We're doing America. it all practical. <laughs> You're doing wow. 75,000 jobs. <laughs> That's amazing. Was and this then the another... cooks of the granola. <laughs> Can I ask this idea of yours? Was this based on a dream or a real life thing that happened? <laughs> the idea of the granola bar. This was um, based on a true story of me going to a vending machine and getting a cliff bar. And <laughs> I, I asked myself for the rights cliff bars. and I slept on it and I said yes. <laughs> wow, that's incredible. Um, Big Buck Hunter, the show is uh, it's actually dropping today. It's dropped today. It's available. Congratulations. Yeah. Wow. So they didn't want to tell anyone about it. They wanted to be one of those. You know how Stranger Things wasn't advertised before it came out and became a big hit. So they want. Oh, apparently, same with Beyonce. Yeah, same with Beyonce. Beyonce Disney wants, never advertised ever. Just, no, Disney wants so this to be So you're doing just a there. cold drop. A cold drop. And just, um, we it's did a thing whole series today and um it, it's really fantastic and uh, i really want you all go to go check it out and we are doing a, a special promotion with the big buck hunters um where uh we are uh it's kind of like when disney put jack sparrow into um uh the pirates of the caribbean ride 
Um, which, by the way, the big book Hunter ride is coming. I, I do want to. What? Yeah. Huge. It's, what's it taking no the place way. of? Um, it's they're actually just putting it in. Uh, it's it's a side by side other point of view ride of the Princess and the Frog ride that's coming in Splash Mountain. So all the they're animals just really you see, replacing that whole thing. Yeah, they you are. Know what? You should Half do that with the Claw ride. Machine Nation. You should do that with Claw Machine Nation and just use yeah. the Little Mermaid ride. So oh, if that's you opt such a good in, idea. What is that movie? Oh god. Oh god. <laughs> if you opt into the Big Buck Hunter ride, you go down Splash Mountain and it goes. You have an option to continue on the ride, <laughs> and so then you keep going. And when you keep going, you become a gun and you shoot all the animals you just saw. Saying, "Oh, you are a gun." <laughs> yeah. That's a beautiful That's a move for the IP. For Disney. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But the but the in-game promotion um if you uh if you don't uh if you play the game and don't spill your beer on it, uh, you'll get a month subscription to Disney Plus. <laughs> That's amazing. How do they know? Whoa. Um they know. It, so, it's the managers keeping an eye out. Wow. You're put you're making kids guns and giving them beer. Um yeah, absolutely. No. Um, yes, making kids guns, making adults not spill their beer. I think those oh, are two. Oh, got it. Got Two it. Nice Sorry, I just things. wanted to be clear. And I wouldn't say I would. I, I, I should also mention the uh, Splash Mountain edition is um, it is uh, eighteen plus. So if you're a kid, oh, you will be good. taken off, and then mm. the, it's an adult. And only. then you get the option. <laughs> yeah, then you get the option. Hey guys, while you're still here, and it's kind of like those bringers outside of stand-up shows in Times Square. <laughs> hey, come on over. Hey, we got another one. We got another one. Hey, hey, hey. You guys, you guys want to see something crazy? You guys want to see something wow. crazy? Wow, yeah. the right Incredible. operators are so desperate. They are desperate. They're <laughs> thirsty. Incredible. Um, for me, I I will be departing back to the video game world um, for another project. Hopefully, I'll be able to keep two foot in each pool, two feet in each pool. How many feet do you say. have? <laughs> three. Um, three. One for my wife, one for uh, TV, and one for video games. Um, I am, believe it or not, we're making a video <laughs> We are. Uh, it's doing, always important to keep one foot in your wife. <laughs> one foot in my wife. And we are doing a video game. Believe it or not, I'll announce it here. It's a big deal. We're doing podcast the video game. Um, oh, wow. Yes. How do you play that? What's the idea of that? I don't know yet, guys. They just hired me and we'll figure it out. <laughs> I, I hope I hope. I, I hope it'll be something as exciting as throwing granola bars at people. Because when I said, how do we make the idea of a podcast a video game? Not just a, a certain podcast, but the idea of a podcast into a video game. I said, hold on, buddy. That's going to be kind of hard. But I said that when I thought of making Wii Sports a, a movie. Hold with on. Serena I just Williams. had the best so. idea for a movie. It's yeah. a podcast in which a video game producer pitches a podcast video game. That's such a good idea. I will have to talk after this. I would we love to be a part of that. We should talk after this, actually. Mm-hmm. That's just like Lin Manuel Miranda's Al- Alexander Hamilton musical. Mm. I was just thinking that. You know what? I just had the crazy idea. What about a movie that's about somebody coming up with the idea about a movie that's about? A person suggesting in a podcast. This has been artists on artists on artists on artists (laughs) answering the question. Now that's why they call it showbiz. We'll see you next time.